Okay, this video is called corn syrup, atrazine, and your health. And so atrazine is an estrogenic herbicide. It's probably the second most common used herbicide in the United States. It's sprayed especially on corn, but also on grass and some other crops. Um, it is a very powerful estrogenic uh, chemical. They call them estrogenic endocrine disrupting chemicals, EDCs. Um, it'll induce complete that's complete feminization when, you know, beyond the chemical castration. It turns a male frog into a female frog, okay? And it, and it gets much worse than that. But I'm just showing you. They have articles, pictures of male frogs being turned into female frogs. This uh, chemical is so powerful. And this is in our drinking water. This is in food quite routinely. So it gets sprayed on the corn and then the, the corn, the GMO corn, gets fed to the cattle, gets fed to the chicken. Well, they concentrate the atrazine. It's a uh, chemical that gets concentrated in the fat. So when a person eats that meat, it's going to have, that's been raised on, you know, this atrazine spray corn, it's going to have increased atrazine in it. Uh, when things are sweetened with high fructose corn syrup made from non-organic, you're going to have atrazine in it. Um, and this article it says it's the most commonly detected pesticide um, in the ground, surface, and drinking water. Um, some countries have banned it, but it's not banned in the United States. Um, Atrazine-exposed males were demasculinized, chemically castrated, and completely feminized. So in a sense, you could say demasculinization would be to be castrated, if you will, chemically. And then feminization is another step beyond that, not just being like a eunuch, but also turned into a female, a woman frog. Um, and so, yeah, some of the, uh, the genetic males turned into females were actually even fertile. You know, this was done at a young, early phase in uh, their development. Um, so it, and it can spread through the wind a long distance from where it was initially sprayed on the corn crops. They said up to a thousand kilometers, even in some special situations, because it goes up into the rain, then it comes back down in the, in the rain. So it's rather shocking. And here's just pictures of frogs. You know, this is a one frog, they're brothers, but one was turned into a female by the atrazine and they're having sex with each other. So rather a shocking thing. Okay, and so you thought, oh, well, that's just frogs. No, it's not just frogs. The uh, same experiments in similar fashion have been done through all vertebrate classes. And atrazine caused partial or complete feminization of all vertebrate classes, fish, amphibians, reptiles, and also mammals. Okay, this is powerful stuff, and it's in your drinking water. Okay, it's in your meat. It's in your corn syrup, your high fructose corn syrup sweetened stuff done with uh, non-organic corn, which most of it is. And it meets all the so-called Hill criteria as an endocrine disruptor. So this is powerful stuff. Okay. So this is another reason why I only eat organic food. I mean, if I was starving, would I eat anything else? Yeah, sure, but uh, not, not unless I was starving. Uh, it has a powerful effect on the immune system. And estrogenic chemicals in general have almost like a schizophrenic effect on the immune system and it has to be that way if you think about it with regard to pregnancy because having a pregnancy for a woman is almost like having a transplant the body has to not reject the foreign uh, DNA and cell material in order for the baby to do well so that's good but on the other hand really high estrogen levels um, they also have some negative effects on the immune system. Women have about 80% of autoimmune diseases, and that's thought in part due to their higher estrogen levels. Um, so, so the immune system increased in some ways, decreased in some other ways, and the atrazine has some surprising, powerful negative effects on the immune system. Um, it's thought to inhibit the electron transport chain in the mitochondria. So this is the inner mitochondrial membrane. The mitochondria is the metabolic workhorse of the individual cell. In the center of a mitochondria, so in the center, it's called the matrix, that's where Krebs cycle runs for metabolism of carbohydrates and fats. And also amino acids can be metabolized through Krebs cycle. Then the Krebs cycle electron carriers, NADH, FADH2, they go to the inner mitochondrial membrane, complex one and complex two. Guess what? The researchers in this group felt that they think that atrazine is inhibiting complex one and complex three. Well, those are, you know, major important sites of electron transport 
in your inner mitochondrial membrane for making ATP. You have electron transport coupled to oxidative phosphorylation. So what I'm saying is this is a metabolic disaster, okay? Um, things that damage mitochondria tend to increase the risk of cancer. They also increase the risk of diabetes. Estrogen itself is a fat storage hormone which causes people to gain weight. Atrazine's mechanism was not specifically binding to the estrogen receptor itself, but rather causing increased aromatase activity in the animal that had ingested it. And that would then increase the estrogen levels and it could do so significantly. Because the human body normally has relatively low amounts of estrogen hormone that are free, you know, away from steroid hormone binding globulin. And the point I'm saying is, when somebody's eating a lot of this stuff, their intake can be quite variable and they can ingest quite a lot of it. So they can have a tremendous activation of their hormones beyond what would ever normally occur. Um, atrazine can also stimulate increased release of prolactin from the pituitary. And I've seen some women who've gotten workup after workup for trying to understand why is their prolactin elevated. You know, it might be from the atrazine. And here's the studies that correlate that. In addition, it causes damage to the immune system because it reduces um, the lymphocyte NK cells. So what that means is it decreases immune function. Anything that decreases lymphocyte NK cells, that will also increase the risk of cancer because you need your immune system to remove cancer cells. So um, there's some you know, claims that it might be associated with uh, causing problems with dopamine synthesis, which would then relate it to Parkinson's. So we're not going to get into all that today. This is simply a review. Here's the article right here. If any of this stuff you want to look it up, it'd be pretty easy to look it up. All these little pieces of data here are all from this same article. So anyways, that's rather extraordinary. You know, all estrogen chemicals you, estro and estrogenic chemicals, you think of them doing some basic things that estrogen does, but we sometimes forget that estrogen, the hormone, is involved in a lot of processes. And when the estrogen system is disrupted, it's not only going to potentially cause feminization. And I think also, if a young person is, you know, a little bit confused about, you know, feminization, one thing that could be done that that might have an effect would be reducing their intake of these estrogen disrupting chemicals. A carbon water filter on the house will remove this stuff. So you want a whole house carbon. Uh, water filter and then you can even get a more powerful water filter in the kitchen but even at least have one in the kitchen because all estrogens you know they're hydrophobic compounds in general um, and the estrogen disruptors now we're getting into a little bit of a different topic but I'm saying you definitely want a carbon whole house water filter if possible and at least a kitchen carbon water filter because uh, you can get exposed to a lot of these estrogenic chemicals in the shower just from the water transdermally being absorbed the, the estrogen component of it so anyways, I just wanted to share with you this paper on estrogen. I thought this was interesting. Mitochondrial inhibition, reduction in lymphocyte NK cells, both of these things increasing cancer risk and the estrogenic activity. So it's increasing cancer risk in a minimum of three ways, by damaging the mitochondria, by increasing estrogen levels, and by damaging the lymphocyte NK cells. So anyways, that's it.